Let's talk about a new poll out this morning shows that half of Americans, so a new poll out this morning shows that half of Americans think the United States will lose superpower status within 10 years. I want everyone right now who's watching in the comments section, let me know if you're one of those people. Do you think in the next 10 years, the United States will lose superpower status? And, and what does that mean? I mean, that means economic status, right? That means military uh, status. Global hegemony, um, you know, the right, to the, the exportation of culture right. and cultural ideals. The, uh, the, the, well, the U.S. dollar as the, yes. the U.S. dollar as the reserve currency of the world. Right. Right. All of those things. So the World Economic Forum and their Great Reset, I mean, we are watching literally what they said, the Great Reset unfold exactly as they predicted and exactly as they wanted. Then, then the Prince Wales, uh, the Prince of Wales, Charles, was the man to introduce the Great Reset. He introduced it in a video. Um, now he is king. And here's what he said. Case. We have no alternative because otherwise, unless we take the action necessary and we build uh, again in a greener and more sustainable and more inclusive way, then we will end up having more and more pandemics and more and more disasters from ever, ever accelerating global warming and climate change. So this is the one moment, as, uh, as you've all been saying, when we have to, 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 to make uh, as much progress as we can now yeah, towards the great reset so when he released the video on the great reset you know it's couched around covid and our response so that we don't have that experience again but that was the that was the use of it right that was the cover right and he's using these broad strokes of like we have no choice or else the planet will die or else we will be shoved back into lockdowns because of pandemics that rage on, right? I mean, these are things that are verifiable, but there's a lot of fear mongering around them. So we don't talk about them in any kind of rational way. Well, there will not be Western superpowers, but instead under the plan for the Great Reset, I mean, it's, it's unfolding, right? We might not like it. If you're in the United States, you might not like it, but this is exactly what they wanted to have happen, right? Which is a consolidated power structure led by global corporatists. So there wouldn't be like sovereignty, forget about individual sovereignty from a nation. It's really about these unelected leaders driving, driving policy um, and consolidating power. The plan has multiple parts. So if you've read the Great Reset Plan, you know that it has three main pillars. Uh, so we'll get to that in a moment. I wanna go through each piece of this because it's important. But meanwhile, this poll out this morning that YouGov did, um, it's stunning. Among 15 pot uh, potential future scenarios involving instability or political violence, the one that most Americans consider likely is the in the next decade is that the U.S. ceases to be a global superpower. 50% say that, followed by a total collapse of the U.S. economy. We'll get to that in a second. Each of these 15 dire scenarios is considered somewhat or very likely in the next decade by at least 20% of Americans. So let's kind of go through some of these, the 50% that the U.S. will no longer be a global superpower. Yeah. There will be a total economic collapse. There'll be a civil war between people who call themselves Republicans and Democrats. The U.S. will no longer be a democracy. That one stood out to me. I mean, it's debatable how much it is at this point, but I mean, okay. it is a republic, so I know anyway, but there'll be a civil war in the U.S. There will be a total breakdown of law and order. Uh, there'll be a civil war between red and blue states. The U.S. will become a fascist dictatorship. Mm -hmm. The U.S. will be invaded by a foreign country. That seems unlikely. There will be a civil war between the rich and the poor. Okay. There will be a civil war between the... I mean, we already have a civil war between the rich and the poor, yes. don't we? I mean, okay. There will be a civil war between people of different races. States will secede from the United States. Uh, the federal government will confiscate citizens' firearms. I mean, some of these things are already happening. Yes. There will be a civil war between people living in cities and people living in rural areas. Now, you think about like when you come, you know, you have farmers. You were, we're, we're seeing this already. We're seeing, you know, government clamping down on people that have farms. But with a control of information, we could be experiencing it without being able to label it such. Right. Like the one that you missed here, the U.S. will become a communist dictatorship. Right. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, we have facets of that at, in place. Yeah. And but we can't say so. Right. 
we can't um, we can't even discuss it in certain instances, but in certain facets, I'm afraid to <laughs> say those things. Okay. Uh, um, after an end to the U.S. global superpower status, and they also have this economic status, which is crazy. This new poll shows that Americans see a total economic collapse in this YouGov poll. Look at this. Look at the top there. There will be a total economic collapse, and the U.S. will no longer be a global superpower. Overwhelmingly. There will be a total breakdown of law and order. Federal government will confiscate citizens' firearms. Like the list goes on and on how this breaks down among Republicans and Democrats. Republicans more than Democrats feel that this is going to be the case. I mean, that means a lot of things for all of us. One, maybe a devaluation of currency. Yeah. Absolutely, that's the case, mm -hmm. right? Um, a devaluation of our passport status. Right now, the United States has visa-free travel to many countries. Uh, that could be reduced if many countries decide that the United States is no longer a, a superpower to play with, right? Right. Um, collapse of the banking system, which is dependent on debt overseas, right? These are things that all of us are sitting on right now as privilege, and we don't know it until it's pulled out from under us. And so this is all part of the plan. This is all part of the Great Reset plan. There are three main things that are, if you read the Great Reset's website and you go right through their list of exactly what they want, it's broken down in three ways. I'll kind of give you the general overview. Number one, a move to stakeholder capitalism, right? So stakeholder capitalism is the idea that it's not shareholders who are benefiting the most, it's everyone in the company that's going to benefit equally, right? Employees, the low- Or everyone in the ecosystem, really. Stakeholder yeah. capitalism is also answerable to uh, customers and people in the community and, and all of those things. It's the opposite of shareholder capitalism. And uh, so it could, you know, it's not just, yeah, the, the, the customer who buys the product, right? right? It's the person who's who is a neighbor of the person who bought the well, product. Well, it's like if you're Starbucks, right? You're not just answerable to um, the shareholders. You are also answerable to the homeless guy who like uses the bathroom as a as a shower, right? Right. Th right. That is also stick. Yes, it's for everybody. So a move to stakeholder capitalism. Number two is a large scale spending by governments to move us off, off of fossil fuels towards sustainability. Okay, that's number two. Number three is to harness the fourth industrial revolution, which includes vaccines, human testing centers for the control of health and monitoring and uh, surveillance, basically a surveillance state. No, thank you. Yeah, this is their plan. And, you know, this is why all these Western leaders are championing it. You're seeing it in Canada. You're seeing it in the United States. You're seeing it throughout Europe right now. And you're watching it unfold right before our eyes, accelerated under the auspices of Russian sanctions. So the first is a shift to stakeholder capitalism, which Forbes says will fail. Here's Forbes. Why stakeholder capitalism will fail? The idea is that these businesses will level the playing field on everything. They'll take away personal gains in favor of their collective. So you will own nothing and it's working. And that's why we're seeing this collapse. So with the way Forbes basically says is, you know, it, uh, it's not going to happen because back in the day, it was all shareholder capitalism, which was a total disaster, right? When it's just focused on the shareholders. But now stakeholder capitalism won't work because they these companies will continue to do the same shit that they've been doing for years. They're just going to uh, pretend it's a PR move more than anything else. Um, I don't know that I agree when when you say that shareholder capitalism doesn't work. I think that what well, we I, I should see... say I'm saying I didn't say that. I'm saying that's what Forbes is saying in this piece, and they're highlighting specifically Jack Welch, the former CEO of GE, which he he labeled it stupid. That when you literally are only focused on enriching the shareholders, that's not going to work. That was Jack Welch. Yeah. Okay, so, and that's the Forbes piece. All right, I understand what you're saying here. I think that a lot of the ways in which people shit all over capitalism. For instance, you see like Seventeen magazine, right, has like anti-capitalist articles for teenagers as if they understand that capitalism is the death of society and it's the only way that people maintain an unfair hegemony or even shirts in Target, like onesies, anti-capitalist, right? right? What what they're mistaking capitalists for is sort of poor public policy and planning um, because capitalism in and of itself should take care of these kind of things, right? Like if you're going to a barber who's racist, you stop going to that barber and the community collectively then selects 
a non-racist barber, that kind of thing. Like it should work itself out if we have pure capitalism, which we don't. And we saw that during the pandemic. We see the government picks winners and losers. We don't have the opportunity to affect the market in a way that's collectively good for all of us. Yeah, and then I guess racist people could choose to go to the racist barber. Yes, like, fine. Hey, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm racist. I, you know, I'm looking for a good barber who's also racist. So who, I, who appreciates my racist, racist jokes, right? And that's capitalism, right? In, in theory, that should be an option, right? right? But there shouldn't be someone who tell you, don't have these opinions, don't make these jokes that are ageist or racist or sexist or whatever, right? right. Um, so you shouldn't be able to serve anybody because nobody should have this opinion. Whereas if you may have... Um, these opinions and you want to tell jokes about it and you should be free to go into, you know, should you be freed? Capitalism should work that out, right? Yeah, ideally, I'd love to hear our viewers what they think about that. Maybe capitalism. this is not the, the best example. Um, let's give another example of um, the, the, the talc in baby powder that disproportionately harms people of color who use that more, right? Um, in theory, they should be able to understand it for themselves and stop using those products because it's hurting them. Uh, but the government's role is also to like say that this is not allowed, right? These companies, though, because of their privilege, are allowed to hide these effects, right? And so that is policy not at work, not just not capitalism. I mean, the point that they're making in this piece is really that it's a PR move and that, that this idea of stakeholder capitalism, this leveling of the play is just a PR move and it's really not going to do it. They're going to Absolutely continue, it they're, is. Gonna, they're going to continue to do their same shit. They're going right. to continue to pour chemicals in, in rivers um, while at the same time supporting Black Lives Matter, right? Like they're going to, sure. that's the same stuff they're going to do. So they will continue to take away your personal gains in favor of the collective. That's the goal of the great reset. And so you will own nothing. They've told us that you will own nothing and you will be happy. Those are the words of Klaus Schwab, right? And it's working. That's why we're seeing this collapse in real time. Yesterday, we got the new inflation numbers. And what did they say? Uh, they said 8.3% was yeah. the new, now experts were hoping for 8.1%. So the market took a dump uh, because they didn't like that. They were hoping for a bigger decline, but they are saying that the peak was the June 9.1%. But still very, very bad. Right? Yeah, Still sucks. very bad. But so the Biden administration and the White House trying to spin it one way. CNN though, CNN of all people, holy smokes, they actually had this explanation for the new inflation numbers yesterday. Watch this. Only hours before James Taylor serenaded the crowd celebrating the Inflation Reduction Act. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. First of all, I'm a huge James Taylor fan, but this is like the most bizarre and sad thing I've ever seen. Like this great like legend, you know, folk like folk music, right? Like to sit there at the White House and like carry water. Like I've seen fire and I've seen rain, but now it's better now. Now things are better thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act. Come on, James, uh, come on, come on. A new inflation report showed consumer prices remain hotter than expected. His number one economic priority is to deal with inflation. Is there more work to be done? Absolutely. In August, prices rose 8.3% from a year earlier, compared to 8.5% in July, meaning that while drivers may be feeling relief at the pump with gas prices going down, <laughs> rent, healthcare, restaurant meals, and furniture all remained high. A core inflation index that doesn't include food or fuel also rose sharply. Wow. Yeah, look at that. Um, so the second agenda item from the Great Reset is a massive, large-scale spending by Western governments. So, well, we're really good at that, aren't we? I mean, the EU, the United States, we're really good at spending all kinds of your money uh, on these programs. President Biden yesterday was literally out there in front of the television cameras telling the world that he and his Democrats were responsible for the Inflation Reduction Act. And that at the same time he was speaking, I want you to watch this on the screen. This is literally amazing. We're literally watching in real time as the Dow and the stock market were tanking yesterday, having the worst day in two years. And this is, it's like living in a bizarro world. Watch this. Shut up. 
Okay, you're listening there to President Biden at the White House. He's celebrating the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act. He says that he's been fighting Big Pharma for decades. Um, but there is this unfortunate split screen right now with the Dow taking a total beating down more than 1,200 points. And so it feels like uh, it's hard to be celebratory for some people in the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> we can't ignore reality is what she's saying that's so, uh clayton's good friend allison camarada just yes. unable to spew bullshit <laughs> yes my old co-anchor from back at fox days i mean she's literally saying she's like I, okay on the one hand you're literally out here telling us that inflation's good you know we got it under control i passed the inflation reduction act everything's good to go and on the other side of the screen we're seeing this massive drop massive drop because of inflation like, what kind of friggin' bizarro world do we live in? And this is the kind of propaganda that gets put out there by these guys. Yesterday, this is how President Biden described how things are turning right now at your kitchen table. Listen. This bill cut costs for families. Help reduce inflation at the kitchen table. Yeah, so things are better at your kitchen table uh, because of what the, the White House has done. Okay, let us know in the comments. Like, if you're in, in the United States, I mean... Have, are things better now because of the Inflation Reduction Act? He told you it's better, so you must feel that way. <laughs> I mean, in all of this, you know, it's, it, it, it doesn't live in a, it's not a living in a vacuum. I mean, what the United States does is, you know, what Europe does, it's all interconnected. Yes. You know? Yeah. So when the inflation, so what does the Inflation Reduction Act actually do to reduce inflation? White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre explained it perfectly yesterday. Watch. What exactly would the Inflation Reduction Act do to reduce inflation in the short term? So I, I, when you look at um, the lowering costs in particular uh, for, uh, for Americans, I think that's important when you think about how inflation uh, has, uh, has increased uh, costs uh, for American, Americans. If you yeah. Um, what costs were lowered? <laughs> when did that happen? So, okay, but wait, 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 just, oh my God. but let's just, let's just take econ 101, right? Inflation okay. is well, too much money chasing too few goods. Now, I had a viewer write me overnight said, when you say that you sound like a neoliberal and here's why Clayton, this was explaining it. And he said, it's not, it's a symptom. So I'm listening to you. I see your emails. It's a symptom of inflation Okay. that all of this additional spending is a symptom of additional spending. Um, that, that that's why it would because you see what it, yes so right good but, point but the creation of money right acts to deflate the value of goods right. and so when we're all competing for too few goods so in in that ecosystem how are prices going down for americans i don't know i mean again if if your grocery bill continues to go up your furniture bill goes up, your rent goes up. Um, it's going up to compete with all of this abundance of cash that's in the system. Is it I don't not? understand though, what, which part of that sounds like a neoliberal? I mean, I guess I, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I mean, this was his argument and I, th I just wanted to put it out there because I think okay. it's an interesting, an interesting take on it. That it's that the printing of the money, the, uh, infl the, the printing of the money is a symptom of inflation. Like we're printing additional money because inflation's already going up. But that wasn't the concern from the Federal Reserve. Inflation wasn't a concern yet, right. according to the Federal Reserve. And they dumped, they dumped $8 trillion into the economy. And we heard from, we heard from uh, Jerome Powell and Janet Yellen that inflation's not a concern. It wasn't a concern. It's still low and we're not there yet. We don't have any cons inflationary concerns just yet. For her. For her and for him. And uh, are you concerned with all of this additional printing of money that this is going to be a concern? So again, I'm not quite certain. I, I appreciate his comments. And he says he loved the show, by the way. He okay. just he wanted to point out. I need to put out. that in my like Tom Wheelwright Google. Like, <laughs> right. it, he is not a neoliberal. No, Tom, Tom Wheelwright is uh, very conservative. And he's one of the smartest accountants in the world. Um, so it, anyway, interesting, interesting take on that. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah. Um, so what John Pierre just said is a lie. Right, because the the numbers don't lie right now. These number new numbers from the United States Federal Reserve. These are from the Federal Reserve. These new numbers on housing. This isn't some hack website that put these numbers out. 
These housing numbers come from the Fed. Look at this. American households lost $6 trillion in three months. Think about that. That's crazy. $6 trillion. Americans are losing their homes, and this is exactly what they want. My question is, who did they lose it to? That's the question, right? Who did they lose all of this money to? I'm sure you could probably answer us in the comments below, right? They lost it. I mean, I have a few guesses, right? Not even guesses, really. The richest among us are buying up all of these properties, right? Yes. BlackRock, Vanguard, they're buying up all of these properties. They're buying up farms on purpose. The reason Forbes says stakeholder capitalism will fail is because it's just this one big PR move and they're continuing to do exactly what they want, which is to gobble up power and consolidate resources. Well, just this morning, we reported in the newsletter that savings or deposits into banks are down, I think it was 34% or <laughs> it was, you know, up to a third of fewer deposits into U.S. banks, which means people don't have it to put in their bank account. They're too busy spending it in order to survive. Right. Yeah, because if the rent continues to go up, instead of what is the rule? Like you're only supposed to about spend like 25% of your take-home pay on a rent or a mortgage. Uh -huh. Like that's the, I don't know if that's. Well, it's, I, th I thought it was currently, I thought it was at a, a third of your income now. It's been bumped up. Yeah. yeah. So I guess inflation. The old know, rule but... was don't don't go above 25%, right? That's sort of like the Dave Ramsey rule, I guess. Right? Yeah. Back in, but now it's a third, right? And it's even going higher. I've seen well, some I, instances and... where it's a, like, you know, upwards of 40% or higher than that. Right. Well, I, I thought the housing, the, the housing market was losing money because of uh, lattes and avocado toast. Did I, did I not get oh. the new memo that it was going to somebody <laughs> else? A yes. Crazy. Yes. It's going to lot it because people are buying lattes and avocado toast. That's where it's going. Those are my two favorite things. But you, but you didn't buy any additional properties. No, um, I didn't. Natalie's going to go deeper on the race to remove the meat and replace it with processed food. That's a part of that sort of next level piece of this. Um, that's also part of the great reset agenda um, to take away meat, farmland and control the food supply. Um, and uh, of course everything and food supply is all tied to this, right? And so we saw this freight rail strike threatening supply chains. And again, the food supply, it's all interconnected. You have 57,000 conductors who are going on strike, the moving of foods, goods across the United States, um, to get people to get, you know, fresh produce and all of these things is absolutely coming to uh, a head right now. And so again, the control of the food supply is also part of the Great Reset, right. part of this agenda. So let us know your thoughts on this in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, will half, half of Americans think the U.S. will lose superpower status in the next 10 years?